Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Clay, and I am the Bucks Believer. Right now, I'm on spring break from school, so my family's on vacation, and I'm coming at you from Kentucky instead of my usual home, so that's why the background looks a bit different, but I was still able to watch the Bucks spurs game tonight, and I thought that I would give a few quick thoughts. This probably won't be as long as a usual video, and I have to keep my voice down because the rest of my family is sleeping, but I will, you know, get a video out for you guys after today's game. It was P.J. Tucker's first as a Buck. He appeared, uh, he played just 13 minutes, didn't score a single point, missed his one corner three-pointer that he attempted, but he did muscle down three rebounds and made a few nice defensive rotations. He did get beat by Jakob Pertl on one play defensively that made him look pretty silly, but other than that, I thought P.J. was fine. He pretty much played his role, didn't do anything too outstanding, and is going to take some time to really incorporate himself into the Bucks' offensive system. Giannis had a pretty solid game, and that's despite the Spurs doing just about everything they could as well as they could to stop him. Their bigs in Jakob Pertl and Drew Eubanks were helping off, their guards were collapsing on him and making life difficult, and their wings did a really nice job of matching up on him 1v1. I was especially impressed with Kelvin Johnson, who both matched up with Giannis, did a great job of scoring the ball as he had 17 points on 7 for 15 shooting, and came away with a few really impressive rebounds as he had 8 of those. Johnson has had a breakout year for the Spurs so far, and featuring a 2020 performance against the Cavaliers last night. So I was impressed with what I saw, and I think that he's got a chance to really be a solid NBA player for years to come, especially if his jump shot can come around and be even somewhere close to above average. He's got some real all-star potential in him. Uh, Giannis, uh, despite that great defense from Johnson, like I talked about, was still able to have a massive game, scoring 26 points, grabbing 8 rebounds, and dishing out 15 assists while shooting 9 for 18 from the field. 2 for 5 from the 3 point line and making 6 of his 7 free throws. That kind of playmaking was really what made this game so huge for Giannis. 15 assists is his season high by 4 assists and I believe it might also be his career high. I didn't fact check on that so if, if you are wondering go ahead and look it up. But um, Giannis did a great job of creating for his teammates and he really got them involved and that allowed six other bucks to get into double figures. Pat Connaughton finished with 11 points and made three of his six three-pointers. Brooke Lopez had 11, Bryn Forbes had 10, Dante DiVincenzo had 12 points but really made a bigger impact on the boards where he grabbed 13 rebounds and on defense where he was very active coming away with three steals. His athleticism has allowed him to really play some great defense this season as well as being one of the better rebounding guards in the NBA and him alongside Drew Holiday are one of the better defensive backcourts in the league. They're right up there with the likes of Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet, or Ben Simmons and Matisse Thibel. These two guys are both terrific, and they can really limit opposing offensive players on a nightly basis. So I thought that I would give them a little props for that, but Holiday also had a solid game offensively, scoring 21 points on 8 for 16 shooting, made some pull-up three-pointers, got to the basket a few times, a pretty regular Drew Holiday game when it came to scoring the basketball. Uh, and Chris Middleton also started to play a bit better, which is good to see after he struggled a little bit over the past couple months as he was able to get 23 points on 9 for 16 shooting and made three of his four three-pointers. Uh, when you're hearing all of these offensive positives, you're probably wondering why the Bucks won by just seven points. And that would be a valid question. And the answer has to be that there were a few issues on the defensive end of the court that need to be corrected in order for this Bucks team to succeed at the highest level possible. They allowed DeMar DeRozan to do kind of whatever he wanted, as he had 22 points on 8 for 18 shooting, but his main area of impact was as a playmaker, as DeMar dished out 13 assists in this game. The main beneficiary of that excellent playmaking from DeMar, which is an area in which he's really improved this season, 
was Lonnie Walker. Walker finished with 31 points on 13 for 21 shooting and 5 for 9 from the three-point line. This was a case of overhelping in some situations, but other times the Bucks actually did make it difficult for Walker, and he just made some really tough shots. So while I do think there were some defensive problems, there wasn't anything that stood out to me so egregiously that I feel the need to point it out too extensively. Uh, however, I should mention that, once again, I am on vacation, and my uh, attention probably wasn't as much on the game as it usually would be when I'm sitting at home in my living room watching on my TV. Um, so, uh, with all of that being said, I don't think I have too much more to go into here, so leave a like and subscribe, especially if you enjoy all things Bucks. This is the place for you. That's going to be it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you all again very soon.